Hello YouTube and welcome to lesson 7 of the Adobe Premiere tutorial series. So today we're going to look at the render options inside of the Premiere Pro and uh, what it is used for and what are the few formats that you need to know uh, for different purposes. So now uh, in my first edit uh, what I'm going to do is before I render I'm going to uh, drag the clips and arrange it for rendering just like this and then I'm going to render this out. So in order to render out, rendering is the process of actually saving the final video file so that you can share and upload it. So let me save this as lesson seven because that's my lesson seven version. All right, and then render this out. So I'm gonna go over to file in order to render and then export, uh, go to export and then go to media just like this. So once I go over there, uh, you actually see the export settings. And what we have been doing is that we had been uh, directly exporting this without any major settings over there. So today we're going to look at the settings and what they actually stand for uh, for rendering. So up here at the top, you can see that you can uh, match the sequence settings if you want, which will render out an exact copy of the settings I chose for my first edit uh, sequence. So if I were to turn this on, what happens is that it exactly matches all the settings according to the uh, settings I have in here. But usually I don't want to do that and it's also because it takes a lot of file size. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I want to choose the format which I want to uh, export it out into. So you can see that there are a lot of formats out here. So uh, you can even export a GIF image, uh, animated GIF out of this, uh, an audio file, this exports only the audio, ACC audio and AIFF are audio files. So what it does is it only renders out the audio uh, from Premiere Pro. So if you don't have a separate audio editing uh, program, then this is a perfect way to export it. Uh, AVI is commonly used for Windows and it is quite used for editing as well. There's also an uncompressed format, but this takes a lot of uh, file size. There's an image sequence. We'll talk about image sequence in further lessons. There are other uh, settings right here. It's, there's a ZIF image and there's S.264, which is the standard used by YouTube and Blu-ray players right here. Uh, there's the JPZ sequence, MP3 audio, mpz2 that's the vcd format uh and then uh not the vcd sorry the dvd format the mpz2 blu-ray mpz2 dvd mpz4 and so forth so these are all uh the different formats right here so you can try them out and export and see what they all do so right here basically i'm going to focus on s.264 format which is the codec for uh, mp4 and is commonly used in YouTube. So once you choose the format, you can actually choose a preset as well. So you can see that there are a lot of presets. So according to the device you want to render it to, like Android phone or tablet, you can actually choose uh, what to render it into. So over here, uh, you can see that there are a lot of options. So usually what I do to upload the videos is use the YouTube option right here. So you can select YouTube 1080p SD or uh, 2160p, which is the new 4K format right here. So there are a lot of formats as you can see, and you can uh, choose one of them and change basically all the settings over there as well. So usually I choose this format, but if you want to uh, export this into regular format, then you can choose uh, uh, these three formats right here, the SD that is the standard format used uh, these days. So uh, over here, you can see that there's a frame rate of 25. This is for PAL reasons. This is for NTSC reasons. Basically, uh, the PAL format is uh, anywhere else besides America and Japan, while 29.97 NTFS NTSC format, sorry, is for Japan and USA only. Um, the 23.976 is for film, which is the uh, basic format for film. And there are a lot of options just like that. So what I'm going to choose is usually I choose YouTube for this. But anyways, I'm going to choose SD 1080p 25 because I live in a PAL zone. So once I do that, you can see that I uh, actually get options. So I can individually control the resolution of the here. So 
I can change it into this is 1920 right now so I can just type 720 and you can see that the height automatically changes as well so this is 1920 and then it goes back there if I want the uh, resolution to be independent I can uncheck the box right here and then type in the format I want but that actually changes the uh, aspect ratio as you can see here you can see the black bars at the side so 1920 by 1080 this is the standard format so I'm going to stick to it frame rate I can change it from 25 to even 60 or even as low as 10 depending on what you'd like and lower frame rate means lower file size so if I were to choose 10 this does not really show it in the estimate file size but it actually decreases the file size comparative to uh, what you have when you have a far higher frame rate but usually you don't want to go below 24 or 23.976 so the field order here is progressive and I can change that if I want to. Uh, usually we use progressive uh, uh, progressive videos right uh, these days so we don't really to use the other options but the other option there is interlace format and uh, that is used if you want to export your videos for all television sets so uh, you don't really have to worry about these these days. Just make sure that the field order is progressive because uh, otherwise the videos will quite look odd in uh, your uh, uh, will look on your um, uh, devices so if you have an interlace video in your timeline however you can use the option called use frame blending uh, in odd and change this to progressive and it'll convert the interlace video into progressive although that will uh, make it lose quality and there are bitrate encoding so there's you can see that there's a uh, cbr that is constant bitrate where the bitrate does not change over time and variable bitrate is when the uh, higher number of bitrate is used if needed in the in parts of the video and vbr2 is when it is um, just basically better uh, encoding but it'll take a lot of time to render so this, takes, uh, this is the standard option we want to be in because uh, it takes a lot of time to render. Usually, uh, the, this is the default uh, megabytes per second, so I can even keep it as low as 1, and I can choose the maximum as 2. This is what I use for YouTube because it does not take much, but if you want to export this onto a DVD or like even uh, Blu-ray, then you can buff this up into 38 or even 50. So this actually maintains the uh, high quality footage in your uh, exports. So even in the audio, uh, uh, let's go over to effects. You can also add in effects. <coughs> Sorry for that. You can also add in effects uh, in the render window. But usually I like to do that in the uh, timeline itself. Uh, but I can go to audio, select the audio format as well. So the video is S.264 audio, I can either choose ACC, Dolby Digital or MPZ depending on my need. But usually I want to stick to the defaults because that is when uh, the best compatibility is maintained. So I can even change the audio quality. I would like to remain in 48,000 uh, because that's the highest quality over there. And uh, like the uh, frame rate, if I were to choose 3200 hertz, then uh, the audio quality decreases and uh, less file size is consumed as well. So you, uh, usually I don't want to do this because uh, this is like a frame rate for audio. A I, can, I can even choose the channel of the audio I want to render in. So if I want a mono, I can just uh, select mono right there and I can choose the bitrate from right here. So over here are some other um, options right there I can choose the multiplexer from mp4 to 3zp if I want I can add in some captions if I want and there are some publish options as well in YouTube where I can directly log in and then publish on so that is what I can actually do so there you can see that there are a lot of options directly so you can go to YouTube directly and publish Vimeo creative cloud so this is something I use uh, myself in order to upload these videos so uh, this is how you render it. So once uh, you select all the settings that uh, uh, over there, you can see that the preset uh, now changes to custom. I can even save this preset for future use. So the, I, I can save this as uh, the modified modified SD, uh, and then 
it actually appears right here at the top and I can simply select that for future use. I can even add in comments right here uh, that will be saved with the video. Usually I don't want to do that and I select the output name, just click on the output name. I select on my place where I want to export this, uh, my first edit. All right, uh, let me just export this to desktop this time and let's save this and then export. So this might take a while if uh, you use a lot of effects like transitions and other effects uh, that we use in the earlier lessons. But usually since I just stacked up the video, it is rendering quite fast. And then uh, I, I get the video on my desktop right here. So if you can see, that's the video right there, which I actually exported. So if I were to play this, there you go. That's the rendered out video, just there. So you, you have to practice with this um, a lot and then get to know what the different options does for rendering so that it's easier for you to uh, get used to it. So anyways, I uh, hope you guys learned something as always and please like, comment, share and subscribe.